Scouts Victoria respectfully acknowledges the traditional custodians of the country throughout Victoria where our activities take place today. We pay our respects to elders both past, present and emerging and continue to recognise and embrace the important continuous history and connection to land and community of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders people. Welcome to Scout Quest. I'm Abby from Hanging Rock Rover Unit and tonight we will be talking again to our friends at Kids Helpline. Kids Helpline is Australia's only free, even for a mobile, confidential, 24-7 online and phone counselling service for young people aged 5 to 25. Qualified counsellors at Kids Helpline are available via web chat, phone, email, anytime and for any reason. And tonight we have one of those qualified counsellors with us once again. So let's get started. Welcome, Brooke. Hi, Abby. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm so excited to be chatting to you tonight. It's great to have you here. Let's get started. Awesome. So let me bring up my kind of presentation for you. There we go. So today what we're going to do, everyone, is we're going to talk about being kind online because this is something that is so very important, but it is something that can be a little bit challenging. But that's okay. Today we're going to learn hopefully some tips and tricks that can help you out with whatever kind of happens online and how you can show kindness. So let's kind of get started. So how today's kind of kind of work is I thought I'd give you a bit of a recap about our workplace kids help plan. So like you might have heard, kids help plan is here anytime, any reason. So you can chat to us any moment of the day. We're always here to help and support you. And you can chat to us for absolutely any reason. Doesn't matter if it's big, if it's small, if it's something that's hard to talk about, that is okay. It doesn't have to be a problem, but it may be. You can chat to us about absolutely anything. And to kind of recap a little bit about what we do and who we are, here's a little bit of a video for you all. So I might throw it up to that video. You know what this means, and that, and all of these. But what does this mean? To Tom, it means he doesn't feel alone anymore. To Lily, it means she's alive and happy today. Whatever you're going through, if you're age five to 25, Kids Helpline means you don't have to go through it alone. Kids Helpline is there for you. It's free anytime and for any reason. Call 1800 55 1800 or visit kidshelpline.com.au. Awesome. So what we are going to do is we are going to try and have as much fun as we possibly can. And how today is going to kind of work is we're going to go through some housekeeping. We're going to talk about being kind online and why it's important. We're going to look at why it can be challenging as well and some tips to being kind. So we're going to look at how we can tackle misinterpreted messages and how to set and respect boundaries. But let's kind of get started with that housekeeping. So what I want to encourage you is if you do have kind of questions or you want to share and get involved, you are most welcome to use the chat and I'll be able to kind of see that and answer those. But um, I might grab you to hold on to questions about what we're talking about until the end because there will be a really big chance for that. But if you want to get involved and share and participate, you are most welcome to use the chat. And what I do know is that what we're talking about today, it might get a bit much at some times. And if that happens, I really want to encourage you, recognize that within yourself, but also it's important to take the time and reach out to, for someone, um, to someone for some support. That's really important too. And if you do need a water in or water out break, feel free to do so. And today I'll be sharing some general information about being kind online, but it is all about finding what works for you. So let's kind of jump in, have some fun to start off our day. And we are going to play a little bit of a game called Would You Rather. So basically two different options are going to appear. I would love to find out what you would rather out of those two. And if everyone can kind of type them in the chat, that would be incredible. I'd love to hear your Would You Rathers. So our first one kind of is, would you rather give up YouTube or TikTok for a year or give up TV or movies for a year? What would you choose to live without? Let's see if we can find out. So 
So I know for myself, this is a really, really tough one, but I would probably, or I'd give up YouTube and TikTok if it was me because I love watching movies, love TV. <laughs> oh, here we go. We've got heaps of different ones. Heaps of people, yep, kind of going, yeah, I'd give up YouTube. <laughs> Some people going, not TV. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Oh, fantastic, everyone. That is so cool. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. Those are really great answers. A whole mix here. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, what about this next one? Would you rather play a video game or listen to music? Let's hear some ideas. What would you rather out of those two? <laughs> yep, fair enough, fair enough. Some different ones. <laughs> a lot of video games and a lot of music. That is awesome. Okay, I would love to find out, for people that are big fans of music, who is your favourite artist or what's your favourite song at the moment? And to our video game people, what is your favourite video game that you've played at the moment? Let's see what answers we get. Oh, here we go. We've got some Fortnite coming in. <laughs> nice. Some Taylor Swift. Nice. <laughs> oh, modded Minecraft. Oh, very fancy. <laughs> nice. A song called Lover. Shake it off. Excellent. <laughs> oh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Great choice. That is one of my all-time favorites. I had a mission to myself when I was very, very young to learn all the words to it. <laughs> nice, nice. Lots of great ones. We've got Roblox coming in. Awesome. Wonderful. Let's do kind of one final would you rather. Would you rather, everyone, go without the internet for a month? Or you have the internet, but you can only eat broccoli for a month. Oh, gosh, let's find out. <laughs> I know this one's really, really tough. Oh, we've got some people going, yep, I'd eat that broccoli. I'd do it. <laughs> okay, yeah, a few people kind of going on the side of broccoli. There we go. We've got one brave person that's going, nah, I'd give up the internet. It's not worth it. <laughs> Eat some people saying broccoli, though. You would eat the broccoli. <laughs> oh, here we go. We've got another one. You're going, no internet, sorry, broccoli. I just can't do it. <laughs> awesome. Hey, everyone. That is so cool. Thank you so much for kind of sharing, having a bit of fun. That is absolutely awesome. That is really cool to get to know you all. And if I was to choose out of these two, go without the internet for a month or only eat broccoli. I do really like broccoli, but I think I'd get tired of it after probably a week. So I'd probably have to go without the internet for a month. I would do it. <laughs> awesome. All right, everyone, let's kind of leap in and have a bit of a chat today about being kind online. So we're going to explore some different ideas around this and what it can look like. But I know I often get asked, okay, well, why? Why do we need to be kind online? Well, there's a lot of different reasons, but overall, showing kindness is really important. It allows us to all have a great experience online. It allows us to have the best possible experience, but it also allows others to have a really great time as well. 
And there's a lot of ways we can show kindness. We can show it to ourselves, but also to others. And we can show it by kind of thinking about what we're doing, saying and sharing online, making sure that every time we're interacting, every time we're kind of posting or commenting or liking things, we want to make sure that it's with kindness because that helps make the internet a really great place place because that's the really cool thing about the internet there's a lot of different things on there and it can be awesome but sometimes it's not always that way but we have the power to kind of shape our time online so that's why we're talking about kindness today it is something that we can all choose to do and I know it can look like a whole lot of different stuff being kind online can look like asking people if it's okay to share things of them online so asking permission before you post something it might look like thinking about others' feelings before you reply or type. It might be following the rules. It can be including others, using kind words, kind actions, and taking care of ourselves and others. There is a lot of ways we can show kindness online. But one thing I definitely know is that it can be really, really tricky and challenging. There's a lot of challenges to showing kindness online. Even though it is something that's important, it's something that we want to strive for. Sometimes it's tough. And I wanted to see if I could find out from some of you guys, why do you think people might find it challenging to show kindness online? Why might this be a thing? What can make it challenging? Let's see what answers we can come up with. Why can it be challenging? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, we can't see who's on the other end. Yes, sometimes we don't know who we're talking to and that can be super duper challenging. That can be really tricky. Yeah, it can be challenging because, yep, sometimes people aren't always the kindest online. Sometimes people's comments or what they do might really hurt. Yeah, it can be hard because it can be anonymous. You're exactly right. Yep, it can be hard when maybe we're having a bad day. Yep, sometimes our emotions can get in the way and that can make it really tricky to be nice sometimes. It can be challenging, yeah, without that face-to-face -face contact. Yeah, sometimes we don't know if something um, could hurt their feelings or not. Sometimes we might accidentally take something too far or someone else might take something too far. Yep, it can be hard when there's competitions or when people are being competitive. Yep, that's definitely a challenge sometimes. Sometimes in the moment when people get really competitive and maybe if they get grumpy or mad when something happens or they're raging, sometimes they might say things that aren't the nicest. Yeah. There is a lot of different reasons why it can be challenging to show kindness. It can be really tough sometimes, but it is something that is still important. And a really great comment there, text can be misinterpreted. And we're actually going to look at that a bit later and some kind of tricks around this. But here's some ideas I thought of. So I went, okay, it can be really, really tough sometimes because people might feel more okay to say things than what they'd normally say in real life. So it can be hard because sometimes people take things too far or sometimes someone says something, you go, hey, you wouldn't normally say that to my face. So why are you saying it online? That can be really hard to show them kindness back. It can be hard to show kindness because people can be anonymous. We don't always know who we're chatting to. It can be hard when things get misinterpreted and this is something that happens quite a lot, especially when things are written or typed. And it can be hard to show respect and kindness when others aren't showing you respect or they're not respecting your family or your friends or your culture or your beliefs. That can be really, really tough. And I definitely recognize this. There are a lot of challenges to showing kindness online, but it is still important. 
it's still something we want to do and still something we want to strive for. So hopefully today, through kind of us having this conversation, you can maybe reflect on some of the things that you've said in the past or some of the conversations you've had with people. And what I want to encourage you is that we all kind of make mistakes. We all might say things that we don't always mean, but it's about what you do moving forward. It's about the mark that you leave now, making sure that the choices that you make are ones that are spreading kindness. And today we're going to look at how we can do that and what might help us be able to do that, even though these challenges are definitely there. All right, but before we kind of leap in and look at that, we are going to have a break. We are going to have a move around and have some fun. So what I thought we could do is have a bit of a stretch and have a bit of a move around. So can I grab everyone kind of stretching right up high? Nice. Stretch right down low. Okay, wiggle your fingers. Wiggle your hands. And I'm going to teach you guys something as a bit of a brain break called the thumb and pinky challenge. So can I grab everyone kind of putting your hands out like this? I won't be able to see you, so I'm going to trust that you're doing it. And I would like you to put a thumb up on one side and your pinky out on the other. And if you can, I would like you to switch. <laughs> I know it's really, really challenging. So if you... <laughs> So if you guys would like, I'm going to slow it down and show you how you can kind of take it slow and do the thumb and pinky challenge. So if you start off again, thumb up, pinky out. I like to go one hand at a time. So I go thumb down, pinky out, pinky in, thumb up. And then you reverse it. Thumb down, pinky out, pinky in, thumb up. And soon you'll be able to do them both at the same time and then both up <laughs> and then both down then both up and eventually you'll get faster and faster and some people find it helpful to bounce in the middle <laughs> so that is something that you can kind of practice you can master but that is the thumb and pinky challenge and eventually it'll be really really quick <laughs> so I want to hear from you guys if you can master the thumb and pinky challenge. <laughs> Feel free to type in the comments and be like, yeah, I nailed it. Or you can be like, no, nope, not really, but I'm going to practice. <laughs> but awesome. I hope that was a little bit of fun for you guys. But yeah, feel free to have a stretch. Feel free to have a move around. And what we're going to do in a little bit, <laughs> yeah, we've got some nopes. That was really tough. <laughs> that is all good. Hey, we've got some people that nailed it, I think. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Seven out of 10, all good. It is meant to be a challenge. That's why it's called the Thumb and Pinky Challenge. I know the first quite a while that I tried it, I was getting caught, I was getting stuck. It took me ages to be able to do it really fast. <laughs> yep, it is one that needs practice. <laughs> so what I might grab you guys to do is we're going to do a little bit of an activity later. So feel free to run out and come back and to grab something that you can write on and something to write with, because we're going to do a bit of an activity in a little bit. <laughs> Awesome, I might give everyone just a little bit of time. And while you're waiting, if you've got something near, you can keep practicing that thumb and pinky challenge and see how fast you can go. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> some people got it. Some people are going, nope, 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 nope. Way too hard, way too tricky. <laughs> but well done if you were able to nail it. That is awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. So hopefully people have been able to grab some stuff to write on and write with because we're going to do a little bit of an activity a bit later. <laughs> some people kind of still going, no, nope, still wasn't able to get the thumb and pinky challenge. That is all good. Because <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to leap back into our chat and we're going to move along to kind of this first trick that can help us out with some of those challenges that can help us still show kindness when we're online. And this is something to do with what we're typing and how things can get misinterpreted. So we are going to look at why things get misinterpreted online and what we can do to kind of be aware of the language that we're typing. 
So let's actually unpack misinterpreting messages. And what I want to encourage you all is if this has ever happened to you, that is totally fine. It happens to heaps and heaps of us. Sometimes it's Auto's correct fault. Sometimes it's maybe not, and that is okay. It happens to all of us. And it's something that's really, really easy to do, which is to misinterpret messages. It's something that happens all the time, which is why we're kind of chatting about it today. So when, when we're talking to people, there's a lot of different ways that we communicate. So I'd like you to think about, because we're going to do a bit of an activity in a little bit, but I'd like you to think about when you're kind of texting and messaging people, what are you using to understand what they're meaning? What are you kind of noticing and kind of using to make sense of what someone's really saying? When you're kind of video calling someone or face timing someone, what types of things are you using or are you picking up on to really understand what that person means when they're chatting to you? When you're chatting face to face, what do you see? What do you notice? What things do you use to help you really know what someone's meaning? And when you're on the phone, what things do you use or notice? So keeping all those different things in mind, because there's lots and lots of ways that we can communicate, lots of different things that help us know what someone really means. We're going to kind of focus on this idea of texting and met messaging and typing and why things can get misinterpreted in this form of communication. It's because in all communication, face-to-face, -face, on the phone, video calling, texting, messaging, we're using lots of different things to help us understand what someone's really meaning. And when we're kind of noticing things, we might notice what I like to call the four different areas of communication, the four different ways someone's communicating a message. So when we're reading a text message or when we're typing, we're just seeing the words. We're just using words to make sense of what someone's meaning. But we don't have the other stuff that would normally help us know what someone really means. So I thought, let's see if you guys can name some of the other three areas. So words help us understand what someone really means. But if you were talking face to face or maybe in a different way, what other things would help you know what someone's really meaning if they were chatting to you? And if they said to you, yeah, you know, my day's been okay, I guess. Yeah. What are, what are you noticing? What are you picking up on that helps you further understand what they're meaning? Well, someone said hearing. What are you hearing that's helping you make sense? Oh, yeah. Some people are saying voice. Some people are going, yeah, when we type, we maybe use emojis. Some people are saying facial expressions. Uh-huh, that is one of the things that definitely helps us know what someone's meaning and how they're communicating. We're picking up on that. Ooh, body language. Well done. <laughs> yep, some people's like, yeah, emotions, tone. <laughs> yep, there's a lot of things. Hey, there is a lot of things. Hands even. Yep. There is a lot of things, even sign language, so the different types of language and how people kind of talk and communicate. There is lots and lots of things people use to communicate a message. But let's come back to just typing and messaging. We only have one part. We only have the words. Whereas as we've kind of named, okay, if we were talking, let's say face to face, we have got heaps of other stuff that's helping us really, really know what someone's meaning. We've got tone and the speed of their voice. We've got body language and we've got facial expressions. We have heaps and heaps, yep, even eyebrows, like someone said. Sometimes eyebrows can do a whole lot of talking. We have a lot that's helping us really, really know what someone's saying. But even having all of these different things, sometimes it's still hard. Sometimes it can really be tricky to fully know what someone means when they say something. So even with these things can be hard. So that kind of shows how difficult it, it is 
when we just have words. So we're going to watch a video in a moment that's all about the words that we use and the power of them. And I'd like you to think when you're watching this video, okay, so when I'm typing with someone or when I'm messaging someone or when I'm commenting on something, can someone really get what I'm meaning? Or should I maybe think about what I'm saying? So hopefully it doesn't get misinterpreted. Because remember, when we're typing, we just have those words. So we might jump to that video. Hey, did you know that in one internet minute, there's like 3 million Facebook posts 400,000 tweets and something like 200,000 photos uploaded to Instagram every minute. Whoa. I know that is a lot of words. Mm. I just love how online we have the ability to like just totally brighten up a friend's day if they're feeling down with like a funny comment or meme. But sometimes the stuff we say online can go horribly wrong. Yeah, like when your mum thinks that LOL stands for lots of love. Danny, come home. Your grandma is sick. Whoa. Mum, XX. Mum, why are you laughing? Awkward. <laughs> or what about when your friend goes like way over the top with the caps lock and you read their message like this? <laughs> are you nearly here? I have been waiting for ages. <laughs> Dude, I told you I was running late. I've had a really stressful day and that just made things worse. <laughs> oh my God, no, I didn't mean it like that. I was typing in all capitals because I'm really excited to see you. Take your time, sorry. <laughs> Enough with the capitals. Or the good old autocorrect fail. You are so sweet. You're my knight in shining armpit. Armor, not armpit, armor. Autocorrect is running my, ruining my life. Damn you, autocorrect. So we know that miscommunications happen a lot more often online, but what about when someone's just deliberately super harsh because they're angry or they feel like they can get away with it? It's one thing to say these awful things, but let's flip it around for just a minute and hear out loud what it might be like to receive it. I'm fat, I'm ugly, and no one likes me. I messed up real bad. I'm worthless and I'm gonna be alone forever. No one likes me and I don't deserve to be here. Whoa, how harsh is that? I mean, most of us would never wish those things in real life. So why should it be any different online? The reality is we have the ability with the stuff we say to make or break a person's life. And I know it sounds full on, but everything we say online is gonna have an impact, either positive or negative. Yeah, so next time we're about to hit post or send, we should ask ourselves a few questions. Am I saying what I really mean? Can the person tell if I'm just kind of joking around? Am I calm enough to say something that I'm not gonna regret? Am I talking to the real person behind the screen? Like, would I say it to their face? And most importantly, is my grammar correct? <laughs> okay, I'm joking about the last one, but it's always good to proofread. Look, if you answered no to any of those questions, we just think stop and check yourself before you wreck yourself. Let's just never underestimate the power of words because with them, we can change a person's whole life for better or for worse. Awesome. So in that video, we kind of heard, yeah, okay, our words have power. And with words and with kind of chatting online, whether it's typing, whether it's messaging, whether it's on different apps or social media, our words actually do have power. And sometimes, yeah, they do get misinterpreted. And even though it's not always fun, it can happen. So what I thought we could do is have kind of a brainstorm together. So here's some of my ideas, but I would love to hear some of yours. What could we do to help our messages maybe not get misinterpreted? It could be something we do before sending or something we add to the message or change. What maybe do you do to make sure that your messages don't get misinterpreted? So here were some of my ideas. I thought, okay, before you send something, read it back and read it out loud to make sure or to see if it makes sense. That's something that I often find really helpful because sometimes when I type something versus when I read it out, it's different and I might pick up things I didn't notice before. My second kind of idea was, okay, think about how my friend might read it. So I kind of get myself into their shoes going, okay, 
what could this be like if I was the one to receive this? Would I read it how I was intending it? Would I read it a different way? And I went, okay, well, if it's turning into a disagreement or it's getting a little bit of out of hand, maybe an idea could be talk it out face to face. But let's see some of your ideas. What are some other things that we could do or we could add to our messages or think about before we send to make sure that we can try our best to make sure they don't get misinterpreted? Nice, we've got some people going, yeah, think about it. Okay, think before you do, think before you type. Yeah. Yep, proofread. Yeah, it is definitely really helpful sometimes. It is something that is so kind of easy to do, but sometimes it's very easy to forget as well. Yep, review. I like it. Yep. Reread. Yep. Yeah, think about the message before we're sending it. Really important. Yeah, try to be tolerant and if we're kind of starting to misinterpret a message, kind of reread it and be like, okay, would my friend say that or does this person really mean that? Yeah, nice, making sure we're using kind words. I love that. Yeah, say sorry straight away if it gets misinterpreted and explain what you really meant. That is wonderful. Yep, remember who we're sending it to, yep. I love that. <laughs> Treat people the way you want to be treated. Awesome. Yeah, think about the other person. I love all these ideas. Think about how someone would read it. Think about how someone would take it. And it can be tricky sometimes. Sometimes things do get misinterpreted. Sometimes we might try and change our sentences to make them make more sense. Some people might add emojis to help communicate what they're really feeling. Some people add GIFs. I know GIFs is a great way I love to communicate with people. There's a lot of things we can kind of add to our sentences or to our text to make it try and make more sense but what I want to encourage you is yeah if you're noticing things start getting misinterpreted things start getting a little bit curly in some ways try your best to talk it out with that person maybe even face to face that way you can try your best to make sure that things won't get misinterpreted you can actually talk about what you meant and it can be really helpful doing it face to face Awesome. Lots and lots of wonderful ideas. These were fantastic, everyone. So hopefully these are some tricks and some things to keep in mind about messages that, yeah, our messages do have power and they can kind of shape someone's life and they do have a really big impact. Yes, they can get misinterpreted, but hopefully you can walk away kind of from today going, you know what, there actually might be things I can do. I can proofread. I can think about the other person I'm sending it to. I can maybe make sure that my language is kind and maybe even, yeah, talk it out face to face if I feel like it'll get misinterpreted. Awesome. Great ideas, everyone. And lots of ideas about saying sorry. That's wonderful. Awesome. So we talked about a little bit about misinterpreting messages and how that happens a little bit, but what we can do now we're going to talk about boundaries and this is the activity that you'll need your kind of writing material for because we're going to kind of think about our own boundaries. But I know I often get asked, well, what are boundaries? So boundaries are the line between behaviours that we are okay with and the things that we aren't okay with. And what I want to encourage you is that boundaries are kind of different to rules which are universal and apply to everyone and have clear consequences. Boundaries exist in that bit of a gray area. There's no right or wrong boundary because boundaries are personal. So everyone has their own boundaries. We all have within us different things that we believe that we are okay with and things that we're not okay with. And that might differ within your family, that might differ between friendships or other people that you know. Everyone's boundaries might be a little bit different, but that is okay because they are yours. That's really important to remember. And some examples of boundaries might include what information you're willing to share about your personal life and with whom, whether you are a hugger or not. Some people have boundaries around that. And what kind of humor you find funny or insulting. 
they're just a couple of ideas of where people's boundaries might differ, but it's okay if your boundaries differ from someone else. That's actually really cool to notice that. But it's also important to kind of notice what is either side of your boundary line. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to kind of think about, okay, if I was to reflect on my boundary, my personal online boundary, what would be either side of it? So on your piece of paper, you can kind of do a little rough drawing of yourself, but you don't have to. You can just put a line. I would like you to put a line down your paper. And on one side, I would like you to think about, okay, what actions or behaviors are you okay with online? What things are on the okay side of your boundary line? Maybe see if you can put or write, or you can even draw a couple of different ideas. Maybe see if you can get one or two for that side. What are some actions or behaviors that are okay with you online? But I'd also like you to put on the other side of the boundary line, what actions and behaviours are you maybe not okay with online? What could those be? And feel free to type some if you're really wanting to share. You're most welcome to. You definitely don't have to because I know this is kind of a personal thing. I would like you to have a think and maybe write those down and see what ideas you generate for yourself. So I know for myself, if I was to think about my personal boundary, I'd kind of go, okay, something that I'm all right with is clearly exp expressing how I feel about things in a kind and respectful way. So I'm okay with standing up for myself, but I want to make sure that I'm being kind and respectful when I do that and also thinking of others' feelings too. Something that I'm okay with is being inclusive in group chats. And something else I said I'm okay with would be sending cute and positive memes or GIFs. Actions, however, I went, okay, maybe I'm not so okay with these though. They're the other side of my line. This is where it's excluding people in online games or chats. Something else I kind of went, yeah, I'm not super okay with this is pressuring others online, whether it's to stay up past their bedtime, to play a game that they don't want to play, putting pressure on people. It might even be posting photos um, people posting photos of you or myself posting photos of someone else without someone's permission, that's something that I wasn't too cool with. So these were kind of my personal boundaries. Well, let's see if we've got some of yours. We've got heaps here already. So some people said, yep, swearing, maybe something they're not so okay with. We've got, yep, kindness. A lot of people going, yep, kindness is probably something I might be okay with. Yep, not okay with being mean. Bullying, yeah, that might be something we're not so cool with. Yeah, we've got kindness, happy comments, no bullying and no hurting online. Awesome. Yep, no being rude. Yep, bad jokes. Yeah, this can even kind of extend to real life. It might even be just asking permission in general. Awesome. Lots and lots of really great comments and lots of really different comments, which is great because this is the thing about our boundaries is that they are very, very different. And sometimes what we have on the different side of our boundary lines might not match all of our friends and that is okay. But the good news is, is that it's important to respect your boundaries. Very, very important. And it is always okay to stand up. If someone's ever crossing your boundary, it is okay to let them know in kind of a firm but respectful way. But it's also important that you respect other people's boundaries too, because other people have boundaries just like you do. And we can't always assume that everyone has the same boundaries because that doesn't happen all the time. And that would be really rare to find someone that had all the exact same boundaries as us. So I like to think is you never know without asking. So what we want to do is if you're ever not sure about something, if you ever kind of go, oh, I'm not too sure how this person might take that, maybe ask and ask someone, hey, is this something you'd be okay with? And if they say no, respect that just how you'd want someone to respect your no if they were starting to push your boundaries. 
But what I want to encourage you is that our boundaries are important things and we shouldn't ever feel pressure to cross our boundary line. It's important to stick by it, to know where it is and it's definitely something that you can stand up for because no one should ever be crossing your boundary line and doing things that you're not okay with. But if it does happen and if there are moments where you feel like your boundary is being crossed, you've said, hey, I'm not okay with this, but someone keeps trying to cross that boundary, it's really important that you do tell someone reach out for support. And that's kind of what I want to encourage you with our next part is, well, what if I do need support? What if someone is kind of continually crossing my boundary and I don't know what to do? That's where I really want to encourage you. Think about who your supports are. And I like to remember who the people I reach out to for support are by kind of thinking of my hand and thinking, okay, on my hand, who are people I could put there that I could always reach out to, that I could trust with things? who could help me out when things do get tough. I like to put on my fingers the adults that I trust and your adults might be some on the screen. Maybe they're different. That is all good. I like to put Kids Helpline on the thumb because we are always, always here and you can always chat to us about absolutely anything. And then on the palm are the other people that we can chat to as well, our friends, pets and toys, because they can also help us feel better. But I really want to encourage you that if someone ever does something online that doesn't make you feel so great, whether it's in a message, a conversation, whether they're crossing your boundary, make sure that you tell someone and you're telling someone if it's kind of something that's weighing on you, it's really important to talk about and it is always okay to ask for help and support. So I know we've had a really big chat today, but I just wanted to leave you with some final thoughts about kind of what we've talked about today in this idea about kindness. And it's that the internet can be amazing. There are so many parts of the internet that are really, really cool. There's so many opportunities out there. There's so many ways we can chat to people, have fun, keep in touch, challenge ourselves. We can game with people. The internet can be amazing. But it is up to us. We all have the power and the opportunity to make cyberspace a better place for ourselves and each other. And a great way we can do this is by showing kindness. So I want to thank you all so much, everyone, for kind of chatting and to get involved. That was really, really cool to hear a lot of your ideas and a lot of your examples. That was absolutely amazing. And I wanted to just kind of find out, is there any questions or anything that anyone would like to know about what we talked about today or even about Kids Helpline? So if you've got any questions, just chuck them up in the chat and we'll answer them. Anything you're unsure of, anything that might have been spoken about today that you want to know more about? Not Zach is asking, how do I stay safe? Really great great question and kind of a tricky one, um, but something that we all deserve to feel safe at all times. Um, feeling safe in real life might look like being around people that you trust or being somewhere that you know and feel safe at. So it might be this feeling that you're going, okay, when I'm here, I know I'm safe. Or when I'm around these people, I feel safe. It's something that we all deserve to feel online as well. And there's a lot of different ways we can stay safe. So what I really want to encourage you is try and chat to someone and maybe chat to an adult about that because they might be able to give you some more specific examples about how you can stay safe because there's not kind of just one answer, but what I'd recommend is definitely let someone know, um, maybe an adult so that they can help you out with some more ideas or you can always chat to us and we can give you some specific ideas about how to stay safe in certain scenarios. Priscilla is asking, what can I do if I have a mean friend? Really great question. Um, There's a lot of different things that you might want to try. Maybe you chat to that friend, let them know how you're feeling, what's going on for you and some of your thoughts and maybe hear them out, listen to them. What I want to encourage you is sometimes our emotions can make those conversations tricky though. So try your best to calm yourself before you do that. But 
if you do kind of get stuck, maybe take some time for yourself if you feel like that might also help that friendship. And yeah, maybe also chat to someone that you trust for support around that could be a friend or could be another adult. Grace is asking, if the child can't access the phone for a call, is there some other way they can speak to Kids Helpline? Definitely. You can phone us up, but you can also type to us as well. So you can go on our website, which is kidshelpline.com.au. You can do what's called a web chat, which is kind of like typing back and forth to a counsellor, kind of like Messenger. And that's where you can type to us and you can do that on any device as long as it accesses the internet. But you can also send us an email as well and our emails on our website too. So lots and lots of ways to chat. Alex is asking, what happens when someone is sending something that you don't like? Great question, Alex. That's where it's a really good chance to let them know that that's kind of your boundary and you're going, hey, I didn't like this. It wasn't too cool for this. I didn't really appreciate you sending this for me. So that's where you can stand up for yourself and do it well, but make sure that you're using language that's clear and language that's um I guess, direct in a way that you're standing up for yourself, but still kind language, if that kind of makes sense. It's always okay to stand up for yourself because that's you respecting your boundaries. So let your friend know, but if they're starting to not respect that boundary of yours, definitely um, tell an adult so they can further support you. Christine is asking, how can I keep my anger in if someone is annoying me? Really great question and this kind of depends on what works best for you because we're all very different. I know for me something that helps me keep my anger in is taking a deep breath and having a little bit of an alone time. That's what works for me. So I'd kind of encourage you have a think about what works for you. Things that help you feel calm, things that have maybe helped you in the past to feel better and maybe try those but kind of knowing it is okay to take some space for yourself to calm yourself before you kind of, um, yeah, it's important to do that. And especially if it's someone annoying you, try and calm yourself first and then you might let them know um, what happened. Grace is asking, what if your friend is constantly getting upset? Really good question, Grace. Um, this can be really tricky and sometimes that definitely does happen within friendships and what it might be is a lot of different things. So what I'd really encourage you is if you're worried about your friend, maybe let them know and um, let them know that maybe you're noticing that they're not quite acting like themselves or just ask them if they're okay. Sometimes just even that makes a really big difference. Candice is asking, what do we do if we are nervous to ask about Kids Helpline to teachers and parents? Really good question. Um, if you're wanting to find out information about Kids Helpline, there's lots of information online on our website. So that might help you get to know a little bit more. But the really cool thing about Kids Helpline is you don't need permission to chat to us because we're a safe adult it's really cool if you can let you know your parents or your teachers know what's going on so they can help support you too but not every kid can do that so that's why it is okay to chat to us by yourself if you wanted to but there is a lot of information on our website as well if you do want to find out something in particular and our final question from Wayne how do you help your friend if someone is being mean to them? Great question. Um, and this kind of slightly differs whether you're online or not. So if you're online, what I really recommend is report and support. So report any kind of mean comments to the app game or social media site and support your friend, check in with them, ask them if they're okay and um, how they're going face-to-face -face if it's your friend that's having a really tough time. Really similar, you can report by telling someone, maybe telling a teacher or telling an adult what happened and support your friend through that. Ask them how they are, ask them if they're okay and if they need anything. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That were, Those were really cool questions. Thank you, everyone. Brooke, thank you for joining us tonight and talking about such an important subject for our youth and leaders. I think we've learned a lot tonight. Well, thank you so much, Abby. Thank you so much for having me.
Thanks for joining us. Scout Quest, Quest has some fantastic events coming up tomorrow at 6 p.m. We are going to have a live statewide hands-on science experiment night. There are a few things you will need to join in, so check out the website to see the list of items. It's okay. You should be able to find all of these at home. Have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow.